y'all welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is bell and this is the bell perspective you know picture me as your internet best friend hey best friend we talk about books we talk about movies we talk about reality tv we talk about all kinds of things over here while building community and having a little kiki on the side and today we're going to be reviewing the Real Housewives of New York, season 14, episode four, the most interesting girl in the room. But before we do that, I've got a couple housekeeping items. Let's get into that first. Y'all already know this is a growing channel. I'm gonna cut to the chase. Subscribe, support black women, okay? That's all you need to know. I'll say my first thoughts, overall thoughts of this episode, I was crying again. Such I'm such an emotion. I'm a cancer, y'all. That's cancer tendencies. We are a little bit of emotional first people, right? Very empathic, that kind of thing. So I was like, oh, Jesus. Anyway, okay, so the girls are coming down. It's breakfast. Erin, I have not been able to look at her in the same way since I found out about her and her Trump supports. I just side eye her all the time. Jenna comes down uh, for breakfast and bre food is not cooked or prepared. I don't know why you wouldn't have breakfast already ready for your guests, but that makes sense if you're a stop the stealer. Jenna comes down, she's asking to help, uh, you know, Food hasn't been made. She wants to make shashuka. Food hasn't been made. So Jenna's like, okay, well, let me help out. Again, she was the only one that was raised right. She's cutting tomatoes, things like that. She's got all this ice on her wrist. She was like, has anybody ever heard of the movie called Breakfast at Tiffany's? Come on, hello. Y'all need to catch up with, y'all need to catch up with Jenna because y'all are behind and it's sad. Uba has a hot sauce, maybe a food. It's called Uba Hot. And I guess it's kind of like a sauce that you can put on other food to make it, you know, more interesting tasting. And so Uba brought out the Uba Hot. I was like, well, damn, what's a sh shuka not seasoned? I mean, it looked good. It looked good. So they'd start asking each other about, which I'm about to buy. I'm going to buy Uba Hot, y'all. You know we got to support black women around here. So I'm definitely going to buy that. I meant to say that. Um, I'm buying some and I'll let you guys know what it, what it's like. Oh, by the way, I never did a follow-up to Tamika seasoning. Baby, we done ran. We running through the seasoning. We're going to have to buy more. Tamika Scott um, from Escape, she has a seasoning. Oh, my God divine we bought the sweetener and the cajun seasoning we were about to buy more anyway so i'll keep you posted on uba's uh sauce and um, i'll keep you posted so it's th it's about to be thanksgiving so all the girls are sitting around the table eating breakfast and they're trying to figure out what the plans are Bren talks about how thanksgiving is very hard for her holidays it's very hard for her and i understand that a hundred percent and before my boyfriend and i got together i was Bryn, you can tell that Bryn is like searching for something. So she's been engaged a few times and it, she never, you know, jumped the broom with anyone or, you know, said I do with anyone. And there is this one guy that was her ex-fiance that she's made plans with to be with, be with for Thanksgiving, not because she really wants to be with him, but because she's by herself and she knows he'll say yes. And I think his name was Gideon and they all like him. And somebody said, girl, he looks at you with stars in his eyes. And she was like, they all do. I was like, I know that's right. I know that's right. Come on now. I do wonder what's keeping her from getting married. Y'all get down in the comments and let me know what y'all think. What What do you think is keeping Bryn from actually saying, I do? Tell, what, let me know what you guys think. I definitely feel for her. I understand. And yeah, I felt really. I felt really bad for her are headed home everybody's ready to go what is it about the girls in new york i feel like the girls in new york dress way better than the girls in atlanta and i here's the thing i support black women a hundred percent but i just don't feel like the girls in atlanta be really giving fashion fashion like i think that they look cute right oh y'all look real cute but it doesn't give runway fashion. And maybe the reason why they don't is because the girls in New York, most of them are models or 
fashionistas or designers and things like that. Maybe that's what it is. Y'all get down in the comments and let me know. Because I'm not trying to come for black women at all. I'm always here to support them. But I just, I do notice a difference in the way that they dress. And I feel like the New York girls are a lot more polished with the way that they, with their attire. Y'all get down in the comments and let me know what y'all think. And um, I'm cool with y'all disagreeing. It's fine. I I, I want to hear your perspective. So Aaron is the real estate uh, mogul, I guess. Well, I don't know if we could t put the title mogul, but the inner, the real estate entrepreneur. She basically comes from money. Her parents were in real estate. They taught her the business. She, you know, knew. She was introduced and in hobnobbing with the likes of Gwyneth Paltrow, Tom Clancy, the author, like, girl, <laughs> Silver Spoon. Let's get to Bryn. Bryn, this makes sense. Okay, so remember in the last in my last video, she was like, "Oh, having a little kiki," and I was like, "A kiki, girl, a kiki. You don't kiki, boo. You do not kiki. No. Now I understand where she got the verb. <laughs> now I understand where she got it from because I saw the stylist. So Bryn is a biracial woman, right? But Bryn is her father was black. However, phenotypically, Bryn is a white woman, right? We're going to leave it at that. I don't, I believe that biracial people have the ability to identify with however they want to identify. But I don't think that Bryn could ever say to me that she is a black woman because I would look at her sideways. Like, ma'am, no, no. Halle Berry is a black woman uh what's her name tracy ellis ross is a black woman bren dear love you are one of the megan markles of the world you are a racially unambiguous you are a white woman racially ambiguous woman and had you not told us that your father was black i would have never would have never believed you but anyway so she was raised by her grandmother. Her mother was black. I mean, her mother was white. Her father was black. It sounded a little bit like SR, um, whatever R. Kelly was is in jail for, right? Uh, with young girls, younger girls, right? So SR. Sounds like her mother was like 16, 15, 16, and her father was older. That, that was bizarre. Um, and so she... Her grandmother became her mom and her grandmother used to take her to get her hair done at a beauty salon, at a, 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 a black salon. Y'all know how, you know what it is. And she used to be around all these black women and she really like had, a, this was her first time really connecting with, um, within the community, within the collective and seeing it and having a real appreciation for it. Y'all get down in the comments and let me know what y'all think about that. Not, I'm not too much on Bryn right now. And the reason why I say that is because I know the idea of race in in society is such but an issue. And I just don't want to get into it. But y'all get down in the comments and let me know what you guys think about Bryn. We get a little bit of a glimpse into Uba's life. We find out that her mother had passed away and that her mother was her her biggest cheerleader and that she feels alone in the city she is looking to potentially have investors she's looking to have investors invest in uber hot but she doesn't necessarily want to give investors state or claim to tell her what to do and i understand exactly what she is talking about it's like, don't open the door for strangers to be able to come in and tell you what to do with your own stuff, right? And I also think that this is where my mind went. Y'all know I'm always go there. I'm always going to go there. I try not to, but I mean, it's the reality of the world. She grew up on the continent. I'm sure she experienced the effects of colonization and how and what it looks like when you let foreigners come into your area, your space where you have domain and those foreigners have a God complex and they think that when they're coming in, they know better than you. And then they usurp your authority in your own, in your own peace, in your own home. So I can understand where she's coming from. And that may also be a piece that she's, 
thinking about. And maybe, maybe not. Maybe that was just me, but that's exactly what I thought. I was like, you're absolutely right. You get an investor, here they come with some money and then they want to tr- tell you what to do with your stuff. And it's like, oh, no, 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 boo, you a silent partner. So I think she needs to be very careful with who she lets into her, um, who she lets to have a uh, stake a claim in, in the equity of, uh, of Uber Hot. Be careful, girl. I feel you. Size. So we get to size house. She had braids in her hair. And I was just kind of looking like, is this, this look a little heavy. I don't know. I don't know if I like that hairstyle on her. It looked very heavy. I don't know. What do y'all think about Bren's hairstyle? Or I mean, size hair, the braids that Sai had in her head. So Sai is thinking about doing a Bren's giving because she just wants to reach out to Bren and give her some support during the holidays. And I really, so for me, my friends used to do this for me all the time. And I really appreciated it. It was kind of a, a sweet distraction. But still, like when you go home and you're by yourself, you're still thinking about like, damn, I don't have nobody around me. It's just me. Bryn's thinking about having a Bryn, or size have thinking about having a Bryn, Bryn's giving. She calls Bryn. They're having the conversation. Bryn's super excited about it, of course. She loves the idea of it being centered around, around her. And they start talking about Jessel and how awkward she is. Yeah, and how she needs to get laid and all this other stuff, which is so insensitive to me because this lady kind of talked about where she came from. Anyway, I love Dave. Sai's husband is a winner, okay? They were, he walked up and said, listen, I do not know what it's like to have a child, but you have two children. Your body is totally different. You're exhausted. Who knows what's going on? They need time away from those kids just to reconnect. It's like, come on, Dave. We love him. We and we love this. We love this for Sai because Sai be on some bullshit sometimes. Sai be on some bullshit. We respect her, but Sai be on some bullshit sometimes. Okay, so we flip over to Jessel. Jessel is talking to her husband, Pavit. Pavit, I think. They're talking about Montessori school. Now, I have always, I've often heard people talk about Montessori school and how it's a great alternative for their children. There are so many things. There's a documentary called Nice White Parents that I listened to from the New York Times, and it talked about how schools are more segregated than anything um, since the, you know, the Brown versus Board of Education it's a really great documentary to listen to. Again, it's called Nice White Parents on um, from the New York Times. Anyway, but this is, and it's based in New York, talking about the New York public school system and private school and things like that. And I felt like I was having, I was listening to one of the conversations that somebody from that documentary would be having. So the way that rich people live, this is how rich, or people with a little bit of coin talk about school like it's not just oh you're getting an education it's what connections are you going to be able to make how are you going to network who are you going to be able to hobnob with to you know prepare your trajectory to be rich in whatever they decide to to be I was like I felt like a fly on the wall a little bit right I'm like so this is what this is what it is I also was thinking this is y'all alone time why aren't (laughs) y'all Kicking us to the curb and getting it together. I don't know. There was a little piece where they were going back and forth and Jessel was telling him, her husband Pavit about the trip and how the girls were kind of jumping on her about the how she was just being rude with the gift. And Pavit was being, I saw her, like, your tone of voice can sound, like, really harsh. And she's like, oh, my God, you're calling me a bad. It's like, no, I need you to listen with your ears. Listen with your ears. He is, he's trying to speak game to you. He's trying to tell you what's happening and how things are with you. And anyway, I under, did I understand Jessel? I didn't. I did not understand Jessel. I was like, girl, you cannot tell me that you don't understand how you sound ridiculous sometimes. They start joking about the whole not having had, you know, sex in a while. And he said, that's pretty much the tax. You know, you get married, you have kids and your sex life just is. I'm like, oh, y'all okay with that? I guess, right? 
and they're joking. And as they're, as the scene is closing, she was like, yeah, we have to get you laid. We have to get you laid. What are you going to do? Bring in a, <laughs> I don't know how that was going. Anyway, Jenna and Aaron get together. Jenna, queen mother. Oh, we love her. She brings a gift. I'm telling you, Jenna knows what to do. You bring gifts when you walk in the door. You help that person while they're hosting. Like she understands the rules of engagement and we love her for it. Jenna told Aaron that Jessel called Cy Wren and who else was it? Uba cackling hags. I mean, they were cackling. <laughs> they were cackling. Anyway, we get to Bren's giving. Bren is flirting with this merry black man. Girl, bye. Girl, go away. Okay. They look, ama- all of them look amazing. Like the fashion on this show, like why are y'all always so put together? It's really cute. I love it. That's why I love watching the show. Aaron gets offended when Sai is telling everybody to take their shoes off. I'm like, I- Aaron, I know that you white <laughs> because, boo, I have never been to any black person's house. Like you have to ask. If, if, if you see them walking around with their shoes on, you still have to ask, like, is it okay? If I wear my shoes, like that's just kind of, that's code. You take your shoes off when you walk in up in the house. Like I, that I've never, right. Then they start getting into the cackling hag piece. That's when Aaron tells the broader group that they were called cackling hags. Uba has no idea what cackling means. And they're going back and forth. That was kind of weird. Jessel is a awkward person. She's an awkward person. And I think, Actually, you know what? I don't think Jessel's awkward. Let me take that back. I literally just thought about it. I think Jessel doesn't know these women very well. None of these women know each other in the way that they try to sell to us. They do not know each other very well. And so I think Jessel is trying to do the best she can to come off as nice as she really truly is. But I don't think, I don't, it's not coming off. It's not coming off natural. Y'all get down in the comments and let me know what y'all think about Jessel and what the hell her problem is. She definitely got some issues. So they're sitting around, they're talking, they're having dinner. And I don't know why they did this to Bren. Like, if we're having this Bren's giving, let's focus on fun stuff. I understand why we are doing this, but we don't need to, like, put the spotlight on the girl and cause her to have to talk about how her how she grew up like we don't we don't want to do that let this girl have a good time i'm not like that and then in the confessional they kept ask, pushing her to talk about what was happening i'm like please leave this girl alone we clearly do not need her to broadcast any of her trauma on tv like i just didn't like that stop pushing her leave her alone obviously this is an emotionally charged moment for her and maybe she doesn't need to share with with the whole all of America, right? And how many other countries are that have Bravo? Like, well, maybe we don't need to do that, right? Everything isn't for for um, entertainment consumption. Like, let's let's respect her with that. Again, she talks about how she grew up with her family. Her mother, her mother and her father weren't available to her. You know, she didn't have a, a, a advocating parents. Her parents weren't there. Her grandmother raised her. She grew up you know, there's a neglect. There was a lot going on for her and she gets really emotional. And it's like, so New York just want to have me crying every week. Y'all just want to have me crying every single week because that's, yeah. Anyway, y'all get down in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. I, while I think of how I'm processing Bryn, I'm still, she's still a white woman to me. Um, And I think she, plays up into that very much so she plays up into that she knows she's not a black woman no she knows that she it's easy for her to be like fluid and i don't like that i don't want you to be fluid like you either you get down in the comments let me know what y'all think i'd be interested to hear i'd be very very interested to hear what y'all have to say i'll see you guys in the next one take care